What's up everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we are running through the endocrine system. Now this endocrine system is very complex, but we're going to make it simple. I'm going to go through, first off, the function, why we have an endocrine system, and then I'm going to go through all of the glands and organs in the system and how they interact to keep your body in homeostasis. And here we go. That's the main function of the endocrine system, okay? It's to maintain homeostasis, basically a word that says internal balance of your body. So anything in your body that has to keep a certain value in order for your body to function well, like blood pressure, blood glucose, electrolyte levels, those types of things, all will be maintained and adjusted by the endocrine system, okay? Now, how does it do that? Well, it will use hormones, which I want you to remember that hormones are just chemical messengers that are delivered in the bloodstream that go everywhere. I'll say that again, really important point. Hormones are chemical messengers that travel in the blood that go everywhere. Now here's the thing. Some hormones though, will only interact with certain cell types. How will that happen? Well, the hormone that is sent will only act on a specific target cell that has a receptor for the hormone. Let me say that again. The hormone has to have a receptor to bind to the hormone to make that cell make some sort of change. And what changes are we going to make? It depends on the hormone. So let's start by talking about the master regulator of the endocrine system. And that is going to be up in the base of the brain called the hypothalamus. And you may have learned that the hypothalamus is the main regulator of homeostasis in your body, okay? And this is where it comes in. Now, the hypothalamus will have a little branch off of it, underneath it, and this is going to be the pituitary gland. You may have heard of the pituitary gland as the master regulator gland for the endocrine system, and you'd be correct. Okay, and this gland is divided into two main parts, the anterior, so mean, basically means front pituitary, and then posterior, back pituitary. Again, this lays at the base of the brain. Now, why is this a master regulator gland? Because we are going to control it with neurons. So basically the cells of the brain that send signals. So in the hypothalamus, we're going to have some neurons. And depending on if they're in the anterior or posterior side, they're going to do two different things, okay? I'm going to focus on the anterior pituitary side first, okay? So what happens? Well, these neurons are going to send signals, and in this case, those signals are going to be little hormones that are actually going to go into the bloodstream. And this bloodstream is going to travel down into the anterior pituitary gland. Now, what are these hormones? These hormones are called releasing hormones. This seems a little redundant, okay? Check this out. These releasing hormones that are released by the hypothalamus into this little portal blood supply will travel down to the anterior pituitary cells themselves. All right? As they travel down, they are going to bind to little receptors on these cells, and they are going to stimulate the anterior pituitary to actually release their own hormones. Kind of weird, right? Let me say the releasing hormones released by the hypothalamus are going to be into this bloodstream and it's going to tell these cells to then dump their own hormones into the bloodstream. Okay? So that's how the anterior pituitary works. Now let's go through some of these releasing hormones. The first one is called thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH. That's going to stimulate anterior pituitary cells to secrete thyroid stimulating hormone otherwise known as TSH. Now in the name, this hormone is going to go to the thyroid to stimulate it to secrete its own hormones. And we'll talk about that later. The second releasing hormone is going to be corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH, and it will stimulate the anterior pituitary to secrete adrenocorticotropic hormones, otherwise known as ACTH. In the name, it implies that we're going to the adrenal gland, specifically the outside, the cortex. We're going to make an effect on the adrenal cortex to secrete its own hormones, all right? The next one is going to be growth hormone releasing hormone, GHRH, which helps the anterior pituitary secrete, you might guess it, growth hormone. 
which stands for GH, or human growth hormone HGH. Now this is a widespread hormone and it makes you grow, specifically in your bones and your muscles. So when you hit puberty, that growth hormone releasing hormone and growth hormone are working together to help you grow. Grow your bones, grow your muscles. Awesome. Next one, gonadotropin releasing hormone, GNRH. This is going to stimulate the anterior pituitary to release gonadotropins. In the name gonads, this refers to the reproductive organs. So these guys are going to act on either the ovaries, if you're female, or the testes, if you're a male. Now there are two gonadotropins, and these are called luteinizing hormone, otherwise known as LH, and follicle stimulating hormone otherwise known as FSH. So both of these guys are going to go to those uh, reproductive organs and help them do their proper functioning. Now, there's two other uh, hormones released by the anterior pituitary, not as directly controlled by the hypothalamus, and so they don't have any releasing hormones associated with them. The two we need to know are melanocyte stimulating hormone otherwise known as MSH. And this guy is going to go to the melanocytes where you may have heard of melanin cells. These are the cells in your skin that produces melanin. So we're going to release this whenever we have a lot of sun exposure so we can produce melanin to protect ourselves from the UV light. Wonderful, the last one is prolactin. Now this one is going to be secreted during pregnancy and nursing to help support milk production in the mammary glands. as well as help that milk to actually get ejected so that the infant can feed. Wonderful, so those are the anterior pituitary uh, hormones. Now, let's move over to the posterior pituitary. The mechanism of how these hormones get into the blood supply is a little different. See, in this case, the neurons from the hypothalamus go all the way down into the posterior pituitary and directly secrete the hormones into the blood. It's almost as if they're just stored in this posterior pituitary, but the neurons directly secrete them into the bloodstream, okay? There's only two hormones we have to memorize here. The one is oxytocin. You may have heard of this as the love chemical, but interestingly, this guy stimulates smooth muscle contraction, specifically in the uterus during childbirth as well as in the mammary glands to help eject the milk, okay? So smooth muscle contractor. The other one is vasopressin, otherwise known as ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone, and this acts on the kidneys to help us reabsorb water. Into the bloodstream. Okay, so now you can kind of see I have talked about multiple organs that these guys impact, and that's why the pituitary gland along with the hypothalamus is kind of this overarching control center of this entire endocrine system. So now, let's go through the rest of the organs and talk about what hormones they secrete and what those hormones do. So let's start from superior, the top, all the way down to the bottom, inferior. We're gonna start with the pineal gland, which is right behind the pituitary gland, and this deals with secreting melatonin. Now, melatonin is released in darkness, okay, usually at night, and it regulates your sleep-wake cycle. Now, this is interesting because it's only produced when there's low light. And on the flip side, when there's a lot of light, melatonin production goes down, okay? So it makes you less sleepy. So that's really important because when you wake up in the morning, go outside and get as much light as possible to diminish that melatonin production. And then when you go to bed, make sure you're in a really low light environment so melatonin production bumps up and you can sleep better. Or wear some blue light glasses. It blocks that light so that your brain stays sleepy by making more melatonin. Awesome, good connections there. Now, next one, thyroid glands. First off, the thyroid gland will be stimulated to secrete these following hormones in response to thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary. And these two are T3 and T4, all right? And most of the T4 is actually converted into T3. And these guys are going to deal with regulating your metabolism. 
Metabolism is just a fancy word for talking about the chemical reactions of your body. It helps talk to your cells to basically tell them, yo, start using your energy, doing what you need to do so that you can work, okay? So this is a really important hormone, okay? And the other hormone that the thyroid gland secretes is called calcitonin. And calcitonin is released when you have too high blood calcium levels, which could be dangerous. So calcitonin actually decreases blood calcium levels, specifically by storing some of that excess blood calcium in your bones, interestingly enough. Awesome. So calcitonin lowers blood calcium levels. Now let's move on to the thymus gland. The thymus gland, this one's interesting. You actually have this when you're a kid, but then it shrivels up as you get older. And that's because the thymus gland deals with developing your immune system, okay? And the way it does that is it secretes what's called thymusin, okay? And this is a hormone that deals with maturing your lymphocytes, which are your specialized white blood cells that deal with the immune response, okay? So thymusin helps to mature lymphocytes, which are your primary immune cells that make specific adapted attacks on different viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens. So, thymus gland, thymusin, great. The kidneys are going to secrete a couple different hormones. The first one is going to be called renin. And renin helps to increase your blood pressure. Okay, so sometimes your blood pressure drops too low for some reason or another, which could be dangerous, hypotension. And renin will be secreted by the kidneys to bump up that blood pressure through the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Okay, we'll talk about aldosterone here in a second. The kidneys will also secrete EPO, erythropoietin, and this increases blood cell production. So for example, if you go up in like super high elevations, there's less oxygen, your body will actually be stimulated to make more EPO. So you can have more blood cells to carry more oxygen in that low oxygen environment. So that's why a lot of endurance athletes like to go up in high altitudes. They're trying to secrete more EPO from their kidneys naturally, okay? Next one, let's move on into the reproductive organs. So in the ovaries, you are going to secrete a few different hormones. Number one, is going to be estrogens, okay? Estrogens give females the secondary sex characteristics, uh, for example, in large breasts, wider hips, etc. okay? So as you develop, it's primarily due to estrogens, as well as the menstrual cycle is initiated and regulated by progesterone, okay? And both of these guys will be heavily regulated by gonadotropins, okay, as well as some other hormones we'll talk about with the adrenal gland. Think about the goal, too, of the ovaries, right? The goal is to produce a mature egg. So both of these guys are going to help with maturing the egg and preparing for pregnancy. For example, when you're preparing to be pregnant, once you ovulate that mature egg, your uterus needs to get bulked up with blood vessels, and that's primarily done by progesterone, so that if the egg implants after sperm has bound to it, you will have a place for it to go. You will have a prepared womb. Awesome. So that's going to be the ovaries. Last one, testes for males. This is going to secrete, you can probably guess from the name testes, testosterone. Okay, and testosterone is going to give you your secondary male characteristics, low voice, facial hair, etc. Um, and it's also just going to regulate sperm production. Okay, so both of these hormones from the sex uh, organs are going to help produce those gametes, those eggs and sperm for females and males. Awesome. And once again, how are they stimulated? Specifically by the gonadotropins, okay? And just in case you need to be a little more specific, if we look at luteinizing hormone, okay, if we're going to look at luteinizing hormone, this does two things. For the males, it is going to stimulate what's called your Leydig cells. The Leydig cells are the primary cells that actually produce testosterone, okay? Whereas in the females, it's going to help ovulation, okay? So when you actually release the egg, it's primarily due to luteinizing hormone, okay? Whereas follicle-stimulating hormone for males, it's going to go to what's called the Sertoli cells, which are kind of the nourishing cells for your testes to actually prepare the sperm for development. Whereas in females, it's going to just help the egg develop. 
Okay, so that's a little more specific just in case you need it. And now we just have two more to go. We're going to talk through the adrenal glands and then the pancreas. So first off, the adrenal glands has separated out into two main sections. The cortex is on the outside and the medulla is more deep. And I'll start with the cortex. The cortex is going to be stimulated primarily by adrenal corticotropic hormone, right, from the anterior pituitary. And it is going to secrete a couple different things. The first one will be cortisol. Cortisol is known as your stress hormone, and cortisol specifically does two main things. It stimulates your fight or flight system called your sympathetic nervous system to get you ready and prepared to basically fight off whatever is going to bother you or run away from it, as well as increasing blood sugar, blood glucose levels. Because if you're going to run away from that bear, you need to have plenty of fuel, blood sugar, for your cells to bring in so that they can use it to make energy. So that's what cortisol does. Now, an issue with too much cortisol, right, if you're stressed all the time, is that you raise your blood sugar for too long, and sometimes that can easily get stored as fat, adipose tissue, okay? So manage your stress, people. The second one is going to be androgens. Now, these are precursor sex hormones. So in order for you to produce, whether it's testosterone or estrogens, sometimes you use androgens, which are the precursors that can be converted into the active forms of the sex hormones. And then lastly, aldosterone. Aldosterone is going to help reabsorb salt and water at the kidneys. So I mentioned renin earlier, right? So renin increases blood pressure. What's interesting is it's a part of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So renin will not only increase blood pressure, but it will further help increase blood pressure by bringing in more fluid, water, and salt into the bloodstream, raising blood volume, thus raising blood pressure. That's the main way your body actually regulates its blood pressure is through that system, okay? So that will be primarily stimulated aldosterone through that renin production, whereas the first two are more controlled by ACTH from the anterior pituitary. Now let's keep rolling forward. We've got the medulla next. Now the medulla, interestingly enough, I talked about cortisol stimulating that fight or flight. Well, this sympathetic neuron actually goes and talks to the medulla to help it secrete its own hormones. Those hormones are epinephrine and norepinephrine. These two things are the same as adrenaline and noradrenaline. Both of these will go get into the bloodstream and it will help you for that fight or flight response. It'll raise your blood pressure. It will open up your airways. All of those things to help you run away from that bear, right? Now, you may have heard of EpiPens before. That is a synthetic form of epinephrine that helps open up, once again, the airways so that if you have anaphylactic shock from allergic reaction, epinephrine will open up those smooth muscle cells in your lungs so that you can breathe. Wonderful. Last one, guys. That is the pancreas. I'm going to put the pancreas just right here. Two main hormones with the pancreas, okay? One will be insulin, okay? If you know a diabetic or you are diabetic, you probably have heard of this before. What insulin does is it lowers your blood sugar, your blood glucose levels. This is usually in response to a meal. So you eat a really big carbohydrate rich meal, blood sugar spikes, insulin is secreted, so it lowers that blood sugar by allowing sugar into the cells, thus lowering blood sugar. And then we also have glucagon, which is the equal and opposite of insulin. So guess what it does? Increases blood sugar. So sometimes if your blood sugar drops too low, you don't have enough fuel going through your circulation. So therefore you need to release glucagon, which will raise your blood sugar. So hey everybody, that in a nutshell is the endocrine system, okay? Well, if this has been helpful for you, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll make plenty more content like this so that you can understand the human body a little better. Once again, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.